each of you. It's good to be here. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in the house of God one more time. There are those who was with us on last Sunday, they're not here today, and some of you who wasn't last Sunday, you're here, and even with self out. That's why this service is a unique service, because Lord say the same on next week. Well, somebody's not going to be here that's in here now. Somebody's not in here going to be here. So this is unique. So every chance you get, all the time you have, you owe it, you owe it to Jesus. He doesn't change. He's God all by himself. And we thank God for that. Thank God for your attendance. And we'll pray for our church. Pray for every church that's standing open in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank God for our preachers. Our, thank God for our choir. Thank God for Ursula. Our deacon. Thank God for all of you. It's good just to be here. Amen. If you will turn with me to Matthew, the sixth chapter, the 25th through the 34th verses. You need to open your Bibles today. You need to, if you don't have one, buy one. And when you buy it, read it. And when you read it, you practice what you've read I thank God for Jesus Christ and him crucified I want to talk about winning over worry if you don't mind winning over worry Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat or what you shall drink and for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body that than raiment? Behold, the fowl is of the air, they sow not, neither do they reap, nor do they gather into bonds. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? 27th says, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye through from raiment Consider lily, the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't toil, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Third verse. Wherefore, you see why, wherefore, since all of this is going on, 
going to find where it's for, which today is and tomorrow is cast in to the oven. Shall he not much more clothe ye, o ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or where with all shall we be clothed? For after these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. God know what you need, even before your need need meeting. But I tell you what, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of these things shall you be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow, for tomorrow will take care of itself. So stop worrying. Come on in the building and let's talk about sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Can you say, man, turn you to your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, God is getting ready to bless you because God is taking care of you. He's teaching us how we are not to live in his kingdom. Turn to your neighbor and let him hear what I said. Get your neighbor's attention. God is teaching us that we are not to live how we are not to live in his kingdom. When getting material things become your priority in life, you begin to worry about how you can keep what you have been trying to get. So Jesus is saying, allow me to simplify life for you. Let me help you get beyond worrying. And you do that by changing your attitude about material things. He is saying, don't make material things your priority. Uh, now he tells, first what our priorities ought to be in the kingdom. It should not be temporal or our priorities ought not be ought to be eternal but look at verse 33 here's what it is that's it but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you. But the first thing, the kingdom of God, Jesus does not say, do not seek the stuff of this world. He didn't say that. He does not say, do not seek to have a home, a new car. He didn't say that. Jesus is teaching us how we ought uh, not to live in the kingdom of God. How many of you are worried tonight? Is anybody in here worried? I believe I take a consensus. You might have some. Are you the kind of person that worry a lot? Think about it. Do you have a disposition in which the slightest thing goes wrong or uh, even appear to have the potential to go wrong. You reasonably become filled with worry. 
and anxiety is worry. Stress, anxiety, and tension is a common place in your life, and it's, you can't eat and sleep or talk and breathe. It is a known fact that worry can cause some physiological and emotional problem. Medical scientists even tell us that the effect that worry has up, upon each of us, you can, uh, it'll affect your circulatory system and it, it, the process of aging, you can't help that, you're going to keep as long as you live. Have you ever seen things fairly, even young people who look old? I mean, people who are in their 30s, 40s, and even their 50s, and look almost uh, in despair. They look like they're 10 years older than what they are. Are you one of those? who is stressed out because it's a known fact that there are many people who suffer various sickness and diseases because of their inability to manage their stress. Jesus on the Mount of Olives right here in this text shares with us about this all-important issues that we are faced with. But in fact, when you study, uh, some scholars have suggested that one-seventh of the Sermon on the Mount is dealing with uh, stress and directly and indirectly, which the, is this issue with you? What is the problem here? I, I wonder. I want to share with you what should uh, Jesus say to each of us today who uh, is part of the kingdom of God. And I believe most of you, I would dare say that most of you are saved and you're in the kingdom of God that you want to win over worry. If you're going to pray, why worry? If you're going to worry, why, uh, why pray? First of all, he simply says in this uh, text, in, in this gospel of our Lord, comply with the command. Tell somebody, if you have a lot of problems, say, neighbor, Comply with the command. Comply with the man. Write that down. Look at what he's saying he, in verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, do not worry about your life. Is, is, is the old Bible reads, take no thought for your life. Uh, and of course, take no thought. Uh, means that the new translation here is somewhat different. It says, do not worry. That is your new translation, do not worry. And that word from the Greek is an interesting word because worry means to be torn into many different di uh, directions. Uh, the metaphorical picture here. Uh, that is uh, of a garment that comes apart from the seam, like a dress, a pair of pants that comes apart at the seam. And Jesus here, he essentially is saying, don't you allow life and your problem and the pressures that you are under cause you uh, to come apart at the seam of your mind. Because worrying about how 
your basic need in life is going to be met. And Jesus uh, shares with us the same because in verse 25, verse it says, What we worry about the most, what you shall eat, write it down, what you shall drink, I want to bless somebody, and what you shall put on, food, water, and shelter. Food, water, and shelter. Look what he says. Some have suggested that these are the three greatest essentials for self-preservation. No matter what you're worried about in life, though it, it's money, it's more sophisticated now because it all boils down between these fundamental rudimentary issue of food, there you go, water, and what? And shelter. And Jesus is telling us in the text, don't allow life and the problem and the vic vicissitudes of life uh, cause you to come apart at the seam of your mind. Worrying about how you're going to get food, water, and shelter. Now, Jesus doesn't tell us not to worry, but he goes on in the text to share with us three practical illustrations to further drive home his point. Let's look at the next verse, verse 26. Look at the birds of the air, for they uh, neither sow, they don't reap, they don't uh, go crazy, they don't sow, but some reap, nor neither gather into the bonds, Yet your heavenly Father, is them. Are you not of more value than me? Now, many seem to believe, many of us seem to practice animal practice in a trade. Have you ever seen that? He said, bird don't have to hover crops and store them in their barn. They don't need to punch a time clock every morning. But he said, but you have never seen a bird walking around with high blood pressure. You don't have uh, never seen uh, a bird pacing the floors, trying to worry where they're going to live next week when they lose their apartment or their house. You got that going on. He said, God, take of the bird. And brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, but you got to understand that he doesn't talk of uh, 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 about a career of birds. He just told about one. He said, not a sparrow falls to the ground without the heavenly father being aware of it. God is concerned for the birds. So uh, he's so concerned uh, that when the winter is going to be harsh, he tells the mother nature to uh, tell the sparrow to bear more sparrows because I got to take care of my bird. He's concerned for the bird. So concerned is he for the bird that when 
the winner come. He gives the birds enough sense to migrate sometime three, five, seven thousand miles to a warmer climate without a navigational instrument. And the point is, if God will take care of the bird, don't you think that God will take care of you? Somebody say man. And the point is, if God can take care of the bird, he'll think about you. So why are you worrying? Turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, why are you worrying? What you worrying about? Are you got in the worry? Take care of the bird. Don't you think God will take care of you? So why are you worrying? If you're going to worry, why pray? If you're going to pray, why worry? He said, uh, ask the rhetorical question at the end of verse 26. Look at it. He said, aren't you more of more value than they? Now, Jesus doesn't answer the question because it's a rhetorical question. The obvious answer is, Yes. Since you didn't answer, you didn't want your neighbor to think you're in here about to go out of your mind worrying. But this is a rhetorical question. You don't have to answer so nobody going to see you. Nobody going to say nothing. And they going to answer it because it is a rhetorical question. The obvious answer is yes. I'll answer since you didn't answer. Let me answer it for some obvious reason. Answer is yes, but since you did not answer, let me help you out here. You don't mind, do you? Uh, you and I more important to God. I said, you and I are more important to God than birds. Because when God made the bird, he made them all by himself. He made, he made the blue jays and he made the sparrows and he made the, the geese, the ducks, the evil eagle. He made all them by himself. But when God got ready to make man, he said, let us make man. Are y'all in here? I, I'm at my best. So he, so he called them together, the collective effect of their total being, Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, let us make man. You are more valuable to God than the birds. But the logic is the elementary logic, the simplistic logic, so that if God is concerned about the bird, if God can feed birds, then don't get up and punch a time clock. Never graduated from anybody's school. And if God will take care of the bird, don't you think God knows how to take care of you? So why are you worrying? Why are you W-O-R-R-Y-I-N-G? Why are you? That's what John and what Jesus is saying, but wait, he doesn't just simply say, look at the animal kingdom, are y'all following me? He also look at your own physical anatomy. He said, look at it, look at this, look at this, look at this. He says, which of you by worrying can add one stature 
uh, one cubit uh, to your, st uh, your stature. Now, a cubit uh, was in, interpreted two different ways. One interpretation is that a cubit here is really, he's talking about uh, a stand of life that which of you by wearing can add years to your life that is one interpretation but another interpretation is that a cubit is a lenient uh, measurement it is about 18 inches long and the length of an average man elbow and that Jesus here is really uh, piggybacking up on the culture nuance because another scholar has suggested that is the I first century uh, the verse Jewish man was about five feet tall and uh, that was pretty good while the Roman counterpart was much smaller and the average Jewish man went around with an inferiority complex and complex because he felt that he had to look up to his Roman counterpart and that the Roman were always looking down on them and they went around with the inferiority complex because they felt that the Romans uh, were always looking up and down. Now, if that be true, Jesus is saying to us, he's telling us, he's saying uh, to the Jewish order, don't worry about that. Here you are worrying about somebody looking down. It ain't, it, it ain't going to have any effect. And that all of the worrying in the world is not going to change things. But uh, some of us, if we're not careful, we're going to mess around and uh, say within ourselves and in them, in an early, uh, early uh, grave, worrying because we are worrying about stuff that we cannot change. We're worrying about stuff, but God is not through sharing illustra illustration. He said, only says, look at that animal king and look at the years your own physical anatomy he lastly says look at the next verse verse 28 so why do you worry you're worrying about clothing consider the lilies of the field they grow they neither tall nor do they spin now jesus is again getting in your business but that's his business to keep you in yours besides again making sense of humor god has a sense of humor y'all and he is literally saying have you ever seen flowers working for the textile company he says flower doesn't get up and go to some job working for a textile company and spend their yarns to make their own clothing and the dye, the color in the clothing. He said, they don't have that. They're not equipped with that. And yet I say in verse 29 that even Solomon, and all of his glory was not arrayed like this. Solomon in his own glory was not arrayed like 
one of thee. Some of us suggest that Solomon in today's money will be worth around $90 billion. That's more than Bill Gates. I can't think of the other guy's name. And yet he said that with Solomon, with all of the money that Solomon had, he cannot outdress one of the wild flowers in the meadow. Are you all with me here? Look at what he said. I'm with the text here. He said, now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is uh, and tomorrow is as well, uh, used as a fuel for the oven is into the oven, which he not much more. Don't you know he'll close you? And he adds this addendum at this verse here. Are y'all of little faith? Have you ever walked the floors worrying about how your needs are going to be met? Have you ever been you're wondering whether or not you're going to be, able to be able to make a stand if you don't have enough sense to look around at the birds and look around at the flower that if I can take care of my bird and if I can put clothes on a flower's back, don't you think that I can put clothes on your back? I don't, my brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you that God will put clothes on your back. God will. He may not give you a Neiman Marcus, a Bloomingdale, a Saks Fifth Avenue, a Barney in New York. Are y'all in here? And the logic that if God can take care of birds and flowers, don't you think that he will take care of you? Okay, so why are you worrying? Ask your neighbor, are you worried here? Why are you worried? That's what Jesus is saying. Now think about it a few moments. Yes, we got to get in my Lord's supper. At least a bird, when a bird gets hungry, a bird can fly somewhere. A bird can scratch the ground and find a worm. But a flower stationary can't go nowhere. And every evening when sun goes down over the western hill that flower seen to fold up its foliage the birds say he is maker and creator but every morning when the sun comes across the east side, that flower holds up its head open it up his arm and if it's saying Lord I thank you I like that Lord I thank you I thank you for one more day preach Pastor Irvin I thank you but what I'm here to tell you that if God can take care of bird that if God can take care of flower don't you think that God will leave you out of the equation. Why are you worrying? So leave it with me and let me finish this next week. But I got a little thing to say. The command, the book said, comply with the command because God has something for you. You will save in the church
when the preacher, they opened the door, you came down. All of that. Then you think, he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of those other things will be what thing? Each one of you, you're in the kingdom and God give you some things. He got fresh, brand new blessings every morning. That's what Lamentation says. What thing? You issue those things one at a time, but you have to go through something to get whatever that thing is. As you mature in your faith, God keep adding unto you. And God can take care of you. Consider the bird and the flower and the sovereignty of God. That'll get you over the hump. Next thing you'll know, your bills are paid and because you took time out to prepare yourself in so many other ways. It just wasn't so much physical, but he will give you what you need, but he'll all give you something that you've been desired and want. So don't count Jesus out of your life. Would you bow your head? See a silent praise. Ask the Lord to bless. Don't be scared. Of it. Lord, bless me. You know what my needs are. You know what I'm going through. Lord, bless. <laughs> Please keep those, keep me in your mind. And then if you don't have a church home, repeat this after me. I'm saved, Lord, through your blood. Forgive me for going to pieces.
again, bow your head. Bless this bread which symbolizes your